We now come to the relatively straightforward tasks of copying, moving and renaming files. Anyone who has anything to do with computer files has probably encountered the notion of copying, moving and renaming files before. For those that haven't, copying is simply making an exact duplicate of the file, either with a different name or with the same name in a different directory, because files cannot have the same name in the same directory. Moving a file means either taking it well, it does in fact mean taking it from one directory and putting it in another, and renaming it simply means leaving it where it is and changing its name. So let's have a look at those in turn. Firstly, copying. Copying is done using the cp command. cp is obviously short for copy. We are duplicating files with this command. There's two ways that you can use copy on the command line. They are as follows. One is to simply copy a file named 1 to a file 2. Both file 1 and file 2 can be uh, full path names. We'll talk about full path names later. In other words, you could specify the directory that the file is contained within if you needed to. The simplest example is when file 1 is a file that exists in the current directory and you simply want to make a duplicate of that file in the current directory with a different name. So let's have a look at that particular example now. So here are our files, and let's uh, make a duplicate of bin file, but we'll call it something else. So we'll copy bin file, and we'll call it another dash bin file. Fair enough. And it doesn't give us any notice to say that that has successfully occurred, but as with most Unix programs, if you don't see any messages, then you can assume that it has worked. We can, of course, verify that it has worked by simply doing another ls. And there we have it, another bin file right there. Let's have a look at the other way in which copy can be used. You can copy a file, or in fact a series of files, to a directory. If the second of the arguments, or if you like, the last of the arguments on the cp command line, is the name of a directory, then the files, file 1 to file n, there may only be one, but if there are many, then that's fine as well, then all the files you specify before the name of the directory are copied into that directory. The names that they have are the same names that they had in their original directories. So let's look at an example of that. Here I am in the uh, trip folder again. I do a little ls minus c and I'm going to copy one of these files, we'll call it uh, links.html, we'll, so we'll copy links.html into the into the tilde slash course folder. Tilde, as you recall, is the name of my home directory. It's a shorthand for the name of my home directory. Okay, so that's successfully copied. I can now exactly examine the contents of tilde slash course if I want to and I will find yes indeed links.html is in there now. I can also copy several files into the uh, into another directory so I could say copy star no let's say copy jj star all the files that begin with jj can be copied into the tilde slash course directory again. Now I'll do an ls of tilde slash course and now there's quite a bunch of files in there. You can see that all the JJs 1 through 9 got copied. It would have been uh, quite possible for me to copy multiple files in this manner. I could say set 1 dot dot html and set 2 dot html into the tilde slash course uh, directory. Now notice that there are three arguments on the command line here and so the copy program will say well, right, the last one is a directory so that's okay so we'll just take all the rest of them which happen to be files and put them into that directory. I press enter and that seemed to succeed. If it did not succeed I would have got an error message. Let's try it again in a way that I get an error message try copying a file called xxx into dot 
sorry, tilde slash course, and I get an error message this time, no such file or directory, which makes perfect sense. So as you can see, there's not too much that is tricky about the CP program. It is possible to copy entire directories and the, all their subdirectories if you need to. Moving right along, well, this is a little pun on the word moving, we actually come to the bit about moving. The MV command, which is used to move files, is extremely similar to the copy command. It's almost identical, in fact. It's, but instead of the a duplicate being made in the destination, the file is simply moved there and the original is no longer where it used to be. Interestingly enough, the MV command is also the command that we use to rename files. So let's have a look at that. The way that we can use MV is to simply say MV file 1 to file 2, just like we use the copy program. But if we do this, then it's simply a rename exercise. File 1 becomes known as file 2. If there was already a file called file 2, then that file will be destroyed. That is, of course, if you have permission to do that. If you don't have permission to do it, you will get an error message saying that your move is not possible. Let's examine how to do that. Here I am back in the course directory again and I will simply rename using MV the set1.html file to, well I'll just call it set.txt. How about that? And that succeeded and now I do an ls again and I found that there is no set1.html anymore, it's now called set.txt. Similarly to the copy program, we can use MV to move files from one directory to another. Again, we can move one file or we can move a collection of files and we must, of course, specify which directory we are moving them to. Let's have a look at that. Here's my list of files again. I can simply say move jj star, move all my jj files into the slash tmp folder. Let's try that and they are now all moved there. Let's check that they are moved there. If they're moved there, then they should not be here as well. Let's do another ls, and as you can see, they're no longer here. So it's clear now that move will move files to another location, another directory, and it can also be used to rename files within a directory.